In my last video, we've learned how to write a generic function. But so far, we've just used one type variable. In this video, we will learn how to use multiple generic types so that we will have multiple type variables. And then we will look behind the scenes of TypeScript to see how it uses generics with its array type. Let's see where we have left. So we knew that um, we can declare a type variable and here it is named T, but I can also rename it, for example, TV for TypeScript TV or type to make it more explicit. I can also give it any other name, yeah? So for example, I can name it Benny, but Benny is not a good name for a type variable because it should describe what it is and it's not Benny. So make sure to use a name that makes sense. After we got back into generics, I want to show one of the cooler tricks, which is that you can use multiple generics. So let's rename our T into A and add a B so that we have two type parameters here. So now we have a B and then of course we need a um, second parameter for the Bs. Yeah, I want to have now another array here in my code, which is um, of type B. So we will have an array where the items are of type B, the Bs. Yeah, and then to um, return, um, the return uh, value should also be something that involves B. So I will return an array here with some item of A and some item of B. I will now swap out some parts of my code because we need to roll the dice twice. Let's create a new function that um, just does the dice roll. I will name it roll dice and roll dice gets an array. And then from the array, we want to select a random index by using our dice roll functionality. The idea here is that this function then just gives us a random index. So we will return the dice roll, which is an index from the array that we give here as an input. And the array index is a number. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that because we need to roll the dice once for A and once for B. So let's uh, use the array with the elements of type A and then we'll call the roll dice function and we'll pass in the array that keeps all our elements of type A. And this will then make sure that we get a random element from the array of type A. Yeah, same for B. For B, we also need then to use our B array and then we need to select an index here in the B array. We'll use the roll dice functionality to give us a random index so that we have a random element of type B. So we can return then one for A and one for B. Now we still have one problem. We need to define a parameter type for the array. And this is probably the only case where I would define an array where all elements can be of type any. Yeah, I don't care about what elements are in this array. I just care about the length of that array. As long as the array has a length, I'm fine. It can be any, yeah, because I don't care about the elements per se. I really care just about that it is an array. Let's also use the short form here, zack, return, mass flow, mass random, any elements, as long as they are in an array will work. Coming back to our get random function, I will clean it up a bit. So I will rename array to A's so that we have A's and B's reflecting the type parameters A and B. This looks now very good to me. Let's make use of our new get random function. So we need numbers and strings and we need to call the get random function and we need to define now the types for it. Here also just use a comma because then you can define the type for A and B, which is a string and a number. And then we can pass in now our two arrays, the names and the numbers. I will also make sure that we get the return values here. I'm using the array destructuring syntax here to get our random name and our random number. Yeah, we'll just copy the code here from down below. Then I can also remove that because we have now all in one. Yeah, we have one function call that gives us now a random name and a random number. One more review. So we have the call on get random and we have here the angle brackets and we define string and number for A and B. So B will be replaced with the number A with the string. So we have A and B and we are returning then a random A, a random B. So random name, random number. 
to prove, we will execute the code in our terminal. And I have some logging here that shows us now a random name and a random number. Since we've been using so many arrays, I want to show you one thing that is quite interesting. So let's define an array of type string. And then in this array here, we will put just A and B because I want to show you that the array itself is also in generic. So the array type that uh, comes with TypeScript is a generic. So you can say it's an array of type string, for example. You see here the T. It's a generic, so we can define now the type that should be used within array type. Also, number will work, but then our strings are not assignable, so we need to have a union type that uh, allows us to use string and number. Now you looked behind the scenes of the TypeScript type system. So much treasure!